What's up guys, it's Frockfaduck. This is one of the worst computers Apple has ever made. But before we cover this, we need to step back a little bit. Because I'm going to be comparing it to the previous generation. This right here is a 2009 polycarbonate unibody MacBook. By the way, uh, polycarbonate, it means it's plastic. This thing's entirely made of plastic and it, yeah, it's kind of cheap. But that was the point. This MacBook makes a lot more sense when you put it next to this one. This right here is a unibody MacBook Pro. They're pretty much the same thing except this one is cheap and it's made of plastic as you can tell. But yeah, at this time the MacBook was the budget oriented model in Apple's lineup. And yeah, there's pretty much nothing remarkable about it. It's pretty much just a worse version of the MacBook Pro in a worse chassis that got extraordinarily dirty. Because mind you, when you're touching white keys all the time, they get insanely grotty. It was very hard to clean this computer for this video. So other than being, well, white and made of plastic, what are some of the other differences between these two? Well, they have different specs. Of course, the MacBook Pro is gonna be more powerful than the MacBook. And also, if we take a look at the bottom, them, things get a little uh, interesting. While the unibody MacBook Pro introduced your bog standard four feet on the bottom, which is pretty much what Apple still does this very day, the MacBook over here is actually kind of interesting because the bottom of this is made entirely of rubber. And I'm just going to tell you right now, I have never, ever, ever seen one of these as clean as this example right here. Sure, there's a dent, but usually these things look grotty, disgusting, and they start peeling off. In fact, let me show you an example. If you're someone who hates grime, you might want to look away. Yep! <laughs> uh, it's absolutely disgusting, look at that. This is typically what the bottom of these computers look like. It is absolutely disgusting. And if we peel this back, wait, hold on a second, this is literally just a MacBook Pro on the bottom. It's the one place they use metal. And they covered it up with this disgusting rubber. Well, it wasn't disgusting when it was new, obviously, but uh, yeah, I could just take this entire thing off. There you go. That's what a skinned plastic MacBook looks like. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> yeah, you know, what? we're just gonna put that back on. We're gonna put its skin back on. This is why Apple does not cover the entire base of their computers in rubber anymore. It just doesn't work. Interestingly enough, the bottom of this computer actually harkens back to the iBook quite a bit. Because all this blue here, that's actually rubber. I want an excuse to bring this out, so yeah. I bring this up because this computer makes sense as what it was trying to be. It's just a MacBook Pro in a crappier enclosure for a cheaper price. So my question now is, what the hell is Apple going for with this thing? This here is the absolutely tiny 2015 Retina MacBook. Now these MacBooks were 13 inch models. It makes sense because they were pretty much just repackaged 13 inch unibody MacBook Pros. These things here, however, are tiny 12 inch laptops. And this wasn't a repackaged, rebadged uh, MacBook just to make it cheaper. No, this is something entirely from the ground up with a completely new design language. MacBooks at the time pretty much look like this. This is a 2013 Retina MacBook Pro, which is pretty much just a revised, thinner, unibody MacBook Pro. And you can already see just how vastly different the design of this computer looks. Here you can see the size of the Retina MacBook Pro, and then here is... That's the thinness of this new computer. It was absolutely impossibly tiny. Look at that thing. So Apple took what essentially was the budget model of the MacBook line and then turned it into a premium thin and light model, which pretty much is exactly what the MacBook Air was when it launched. But the MacBook Airs still look like this and would continue looking like this for several years after the release of this computer. So already you can see the positioning of this computer was confusing. This thing wasn't cheap. It was actually pretty expensive for what it was and honestly that is just the start of the problems for this computer. Let's take a look at the side of this MacBook. Here we've pretty much got our ports. We have our absolutely grotty and disgusting MagSafe port. We have our Ethernet, our Thunderbolt and USB. And if we look at a 17 inch MacBook Pro, this thing's absolutely ginormous. This computer has an insane amount of ports. We've got, again, the absolutely grotty and disgusting MagSafe port, Ethernet, 
Firewire 800 Thunderbolt 3 USB ports, headphone and microphone, and an express card slot. So needless to say, people were a little bit disappointed when they saw the port selection on the 2015 MacBook. One Thunderbolt 3 port, one headphone jack, and that's it. Oh, but what if I want to plug in something while I'm charging the computer? You're gonna need one of these. Nowadays, this isn't so much of a problem considering pretty much everything is USB-C now, but back in 2015, nothing had USB-C. So you pretty much needed dongles and huge hubs like these to pretty much plug anything into this thing in its one single Thunderbolt port. I mean, say what you want about the touch bar era, which this design directly inspired, but at least you got at minimum two ports so you could charge and plug something in at the same time. And if you're lucky, you would get four, but not on these M1 MacBooks though. But here, this is all you get. Oh, and uh, I suppose you're very lucky to get a headphone jack on an Apple product these days. Let's open it up. And the first thing you'll notice is the keyboard. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the infamous butterfly keyboard. When I bought this a few days ago, this computer was in extraordinarily disgusting condition and half of the keys just straight up didn't move. Here you can see the butterfly keyboard on the left and scissor switches on the right. As you can see, there is pretty much little to no travel on this model, while regular keys travel a whole lot more. You can also tell that the spacing is vastly different, so the gaps between each key is a lot smaller compared to these uh, regular scissor switch keys. The one benefit with the butterfly keys is that they have a low profile, and that's it. The benefits stop there. First things first, Apple uh, likes making their keyboards quiet. Yeah, quite frankly, the butterfly keyboard's a lot louder. Because there's nothing mushy. At least on these keys, you know, it's soft and mushy. This, you're basically slamming your hands on the chassis of the machine. And in terms of key fill, that is exactly what this feels like. It's so bad that Apple actually went back to their old key switch design and quite frankly, typing on this feels great. It feels like just any other laptop and you can type on this for hours. This, typing on this feels like you're genuinely slamming your fingers on just the palm rest with a tiny little tactile bump. It's basically nothing, especially if your keyboard's worn out like this one is. This computer was in such terrible condition when I bought it that the spacebar barely even moved. I had to hold this computer in certain angles and then blow it out with one of these things in order to actually get the spacebar to work again. Also, just look at these miserable function keys. They are so tiny in this random elongated escape key. Yeah, this is a bit wacky. While we're looking at the front of this machine, if you're someone who uh, knows anything about fonts, might be something you might have noticed about this laptop. One thing you can notice, and this is something exclusive to only the 2015 models, but the font on the front of the computer is just straight up wrong. How you may ask? Because that is the same font as the older MacBook from like 2009. But if we look at my M1, that's the new font. And I don't even know what happened because the new font is used on the keyboard, but the old font is on the bezel. So you, it's even more noticeable. But like I said, this is something that's pretty much exclusive to the 2015 model. The 2017 models don't have this issue, but I think it's funny. Want to know something else about these laptops? They're very unreliable. Of course, you have the notorious butterfly keyboard, which sucks and fails all the time. Not only that, but there's also screen failures. The single USB-C port fails. The motherboard and CPU on these things just die. They can just die sometimes. So yeah, these things, quite unreliable, very rushed. So why don't, why don't we just turn this thing on with the button right here? Oh, also the speakers on this model don't work because the previous owner damaged it with liquid. Hell yeah. One thing you may be able to notice is the speed. These things are slow. Well, here we are in macOS Big Sur, which is the latest version these 2015 models can run. Let's go to About This Mac. Hmm, check it out. We got a 1.1 uh, GHz dual core Intel Core M. And that is one of the reasons why these things suck so much. If they changed the keyboard here to have scissor switches and they put like an M2 in here, this thing would be absolutely fantastic with its like tiny little form factor, but that's not really gonna happen, I guess. Kind of interesting, now they're going thicker at a time where they can go thinner, so I don't know, Apple's weird. One thing you'll notice when using this laptop is that, hmm, 
This trackpad's interesting, because this is a force touch trackpad, and this is probably one of the best things about this computer. It introduced the force touch trackpad, and you can see just how absolutely huge it is. And instead of using a diving board mechanism like most other computers, uh, it actually uses haptics to uh, simulate a click. But this trackpad feels absolutely fantastic. You'll be familiar with this if you've used any MacBook post-2015, but these trackpads just honestly feel amazing and is one of the best things introduced with this laptop. And then if we do a force push on here, you can see you can open up a preview of the website. And it's going to start playing the video here. Speaking of which, let's see how this thing goes going onto YouTube. So let's go into full screen. That was a bit slow. Uh, let's go into 1080p, 60fps. I mean, it's playing it back. Had a couple drop frames. Oh. Oh yeah, that was a bit laggy. See, if we're going in and out of full screen, you can see just how unresponsive it is sometimes. Oh, yeah. It's struggling there a little bit. But hey, I mean, it works fine enough, I guess. What? What just happened? Did this thing just run out of battery? Is it- is it- Did it just die? Okay, I swear, I'm having a problem now where pretty much everything I'm trying to make a video about just dies during the video. This has happened with the PowerBook, it's happened with the Macintosh Classic. Why does this keep happening to me? Let's try plugging this thing into the single USB-C port. Please just be a battery issue. Alright, uh, we're gonna hold the power button here. Uh, I think I've held that for long enough, let's press it again to turn it on. Ah, oh, okay. We got it to reboot. So, uh, yeah, speaking of unreliable, what the hell just happened? <laughs> the thing just died on me while I was trying to watch a YouTube video. <laughs> oh, this is so sad. Uh, I, was, I was gonna give this thing the benefit of the doubt, you know, it's a little tiny adorable MacBook, but no, it really is as bad as everyone says it is. Oh, jeez. And, and now we're going through the very long boot time again. No, it wasn't the batteries, it's at, six, it's at 69%. So while we've got this thing going, let's pull out this absolutely chunky guy right here. Alright, everyone, check this out. I'm gonna show you something really, really cool. And it's not plugged in! Seeing one of these things with a working battery? Getting a little bit rare these days. This is the first unibody uh, MacBook that I've had that actually has a working battery, which is shocking to me. And uh, yeah, just a little interesting tidbit. I picked this one up for 20 bucks off a of Facebook Marketplace. The guy didn't know what was wrong with it. Wanna know what was wrong with it? It was missing an operating system. So I installed macOS on it. Okay, well, I tried to install macOS High Sierra, which is the highest things these can run, uh, but what I actually did was I just swapped the hard drive from that uh, MacBook Pro that I showed you guys earlier. It was driving me crazy, it kept erroring out on the install, so I just swapped it and I'm just gonna sell it like this, honestly. First thing you'll notice immediately is just the much more impressive screen on the Retina MacBook. As the name suggests, it has a Retina display, which means you can't visually distinguish the pixels at a certain distance away. That's as bright as that screen gets, and I mean, actually, it's kind of similar brightness, not gonna lie. Viewing angles on this are a lot better, though. So, even though this can run High Sierra, I've got Lion on it, and honestly, when it's running macOS Lion, it's actually quite snappy, because, you know, it's kind of what it was designed for. It's like if I were to put High Sierra on this thing, it'd probably run like a dream. Kinda. It's still woefully underpowered. Okay, well, connecting this thing to the internet, we've got the 2009 MacBook on here. And honestly, even though this is just your regular old diving board mechanism trackpad, it's still got all the gestures uh, modern laptops have, so quite frankly, this thing works great. Still a very, very usable trackpad even to this very day. Uh, I'm gonna try doing a typing speed test. I haven't done this before on video, so I'm gonna absolutely wreck this. Uh, here we go. Awesome! Alright, this, this might actually work. Take a free typing speed test. If it was paid, I'd be horribly concerned. Alright, are y'all ready to see how much I suck at typing? Three, two, one. We done stuffed it up in the first five seconds. Alright, start. Three, two, one. Ah, no, 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 no! Why? Alright. 
That was miserable. How do I only have a 2.86 error rate? That should have been like 40% or something, that was a lot. So we've got 77 words per minute on this keyboard. To be fair, not the best keyboard either. It's very mushy. It's chunky as in, look how high the keycaps float above the actual body of the computer. It looks and feels like they're just bulging out and they're being shoved out of the computer. Let's try the Retina MacBook now. Something else I gotta point out before we go to the Retina one is... The glowing Apple logo. This one has it, but the Retina MacBook was actually the first laptop to remove it. My fingers are not up for this. I haven't been typing much today. I've been touching grass a bit more, okay guys? Okay. Oh, come on. I'm trying to also not look at the keyboard as well so I can see what I'm typing because I have no idea what I'm typing. All right, there's our stats, 69.8 words per minute and a 4.3 error rate. So that's technically double the error rate. I was kind of just going for the Hail Mary approach of just slamming my fingers in the place where I thought it would be. It really is hard to know what key you're hitting because you, you smack there and you feel like you're hitting about one key when you're going really fast. Like you don't feel this gap in between. I should probably bring this up, but if you're someone who touch types with only about two fingers, it actually is kind of a nice keyboard to use. So it works for some people, but for most people and when you're typing fast, it's not a very good keyboard. I did the test on my main Keychron keyboard and I only got about 83 words per minute. I think I kind of suck at typing tests, but when I'm typing normally, I'm a lot faster. I think that's the case with most people. Also, I just did all three tests back to back for the video and yeah, my fingers were getting absolutely exhausted by the end of it. Well, that was very inconclusive, uh, non-scientific test. Insert something here about the Retina MacBook looking like the iBook G4. Mostly because of its very snazzy edge-to-edge -edge keyboard. This video was running a little bit long for what it was, so yeah, I'm just gonna cut this part out. You get the point. And even for the iBook, this thing is still very small and compact for what it was. Uh, I've made two videos about this laptop, so if you want to check them out, uh, links will be up here. But yeah, the absolute greatest advantage of this laptop is just its design and its razor sharp thinness. It really just makes this thing just so light and tossable, honestly. You could honestly just walk around holding this laptop with two hands and just type with your thumbs, kind of like an iPad. And from what I've heard, there's actually some use cases for it. I mean, I could probably do it. Yeah, imagine typing on it like a phone. You could genuinely just hold this thing and just walk around typing on it like that. It's great. But I think the biggest missed potential was killing off this design. I, I believe this thing got a couple of spec bumps through the years, uh, and it lasted until 2019 when it was discontinued. And then you know what came one year later? Uh, I don't know, Apple Silicon? If this tiny little MacBook got an M1 processor in it, it would just instantly become one of the greatest laptops ever made. As someone who runs an M1 for their main laptop, these things are fantastic. They run great, they're silent, they stay cool. I mean, this thing's got a fan in it, but you'd pretty much never know because it almost never ramps up. And this older design, even though it's still pretty thin, it's still on kind of the heavy side. This thing though is just so incredibly light. And to be honest, Apple's lineup doesn't really make sense. You've got the MacBook Pro, which, you know, makes sense. The high-end workstation laptop. But then you have the MacBook Air, which isn't really the razor sharp thin and light thing anymore, it's more so just a budget MacBook nowadays. Which is exactly what the MacBook line used to be, but then they swapped the MacBook and the MacBook Air line and turned the MacBook into the razor sharp thing, so I don't know, it really doesn't make sense what Apple's done with the lineup. This kind of marks the extreme points of Apple's thinness error, because yeah, they are absolutely not doing that anymore. Just just look at the iPhones. They are getting absolutely absurd nowadays. So yeah, that's just kind of my video talking about the MacBook. A very flawed but nifty little machine. My name's Frog for Duck. You can say that however you want. I really don't care. New videos whenever I want. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.